So, the new modified magnetic nanoparticles in medical imaging is called luciferinase. Luciferase. Luciferase. Hmm. What a coincidence. It's a strange coincidence right there. So let's see what's up with it. This is for CT scans, huh? Oh, it's lit. Oh my goodness. Have you ever wondered what would happen if yeah, you they actually don't want sat to see down this. and talked with missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? Well, the In the oceans, thousands of bioluminescent marine organisms a blue glow onto the night shore as the wave rise and fall. Fireflies flash in the air what producing the their own glow. This bioluminescence is necessary for animals to find mates and to protect their species from predators, but it also has the potential to improve current medical practices and even turn people into human glow sticks. Oh, cute. Just kidding. By processing magnetic nanoparticles to include the enzymes that produce bioluminescence, we can use the natural light to track the progress of diseased cells throughout the body. In organisms like fireflies and single-celled dinoflagellates in the ocean, bioluminescence is triggered by movement caused by the environment. This agitation deforms the cell membrane and leads to a flow of protons that brings luciferase, an enzyme, in contact with luciferin, a compound. Mm. Because the proton flow decreases the pH, luciferase oxidizes the luciferin, and photons are released in a flash of light. Mm. In fireflies, adenosine triphosphate and either magnesium or calcium must also be present for light to be produced. Current medical imaging for cancer and other diseases often requires the use of radiology methods such as CT scans, x-rays, and nuclear imaging. Because these techniques can expose patients to large doses of radiation in short amounts of time, there is often a risk of cell growth or even DNA being damaged inside the body. Luciferase, the main chemical responsible for the light produced in some bioluminescent organisms, can likely help provide a safer alternative to these traditional imaging methods. Mm, Rather likely. than using an external source for imaging, luciferase nanoparticles are being researched to be placed in vivo. Or she couldn't even say that with a straight face. Changes in cell growth with little internal harm. This would otherwise require a more invasive procedure. In the future, this process will ideally be used inside patients' bodies for application in the medical imaging field. Luciferase-based bioimaging is currently being used in medical research studies to monitor gene expression, infection, tumor growth, transplantation, and gene therapy. The imaging method generally involves tagging cells of interest with particles containing the luciferase protein. These cells are injected into an animal specimen and allowed to propagate, and the luciferin substrate is injected soon after. Ah. The luciferin activates the luciferase, and the emitted light can be seen with the highly sensitive... So let me get this straight. You got to get two shots, huh? You got to get injected with the thing, the luciferin, luciferinase, and then you got to get injected with the other compound to make it work. Sounds like uh, the jabberoo to me. I mean, I, I mean, I, I could be wrong, but I heard that it's in it. Charge coupled device camera, otherwise known as the CCD. The device measures the photoluminescent signal in photons and overlays the data onto an image. The injection of luciferin and the subsequent imaging processes can be repeated to track the position of the cells over time. To produce the structures that hold and transport the luciferase enzyme, the luciferian iron oxide magnetic nanoparticles, or MNPs, must be synthesized first. Huh. To create the MNPs, a solution of ferric and ferrous ions is combined with the base, usually hydroxide. Magnetite then precipitates from the solution. Polymers or organic molecules, such as citric acid, are also added to prevent excess products from gathering on the surface of the MNPs. The MNP. Are 40 to 190 the M&P sounds an awful lot like uh, Smith & Wesson uh, military and police, don't it? And what a coincidence. From 40 
to 119 or 911. Mm, what a coincidence. And dang, isn't that a second to the last one on the bottom there? This one right here, doesn't that look a little similar to some stuff they've been showing on the news? I mean, I could be wrong, but. Nanometer spheres with superprime magnetic behavior, which allows an outside magnetic imaging source to track cells and control the particles. Once the iron oxide emissions are made, they're incubated with a luciferous enzyme and added onto the organic molecule. Luciferian enzyme. super paramagnetic behavior. The core has a cubic spinel structure with the oxygen atoms arranged in an FCC lattice. FCC the lattice. Particles consist of a substance that stabilizes the molecule. You mean like the niggas that have the, uh, the cell phones? Are more spherical and mm. aggregate, which is important for their individual use in binding to cells. The outermost layer of the MNP is the luciferase protein, which binds to the two remaining carboxyl groups on the organic molecule layer. The luciferase acts as a targeting agent, and it can bind easily to mammalian cells because the surfaces of these cells have numerous receptors for the targeting agent. The resulting MNP has an overall diameter from 40 nanometers to 119 nanometers, depending on the type of luciferase and imaging condition. The nanoscale is necessary for the particles to be able to bind to and track individual cells. Track. Bind and track. Processing and subsequent structure of the nanoparticles mm. affects specific properties that are useful for medical tracking purposes. Because luciferase is light emitting, particles can be readily detected and monitored inside the body to track specific mm. structures. The wavelength of light emitted by the particles is around 500 to 600 nanometers, 600. using blue or green light. At these wavelengths, signals can penetrate tissue to clearly image internal organs. The light is then able to be tracked using a charge coupled device camera to monitor changes over time. Furthermore, the super paramagnetic property of nanoparticles can allow targeted cells to be manipulated by external magnetic fields, which is similar to some current gene therapy methods. Mm. The cells targeted by certain nanoparticles can then be... That's strange because... I've heard a bunch of people that have got the jab could uh, stick a magnet to their arm in the, in the site. Hmm, what a coincidence. And doesn't that look like a cellulitis sore right there that everybody's been getting lately? Hmm. Neutralized, loose function, or sorted and separated from healthy cells. This can help to address abnormal growth caused by diseases such as cancer. By combining age-old magnetic iron particles with modern bioluminescent applications, the field of bioimaging is taking on a new light. Currently, this technology has proven to be very successful in studies involving animals and is much less toxic when compared to traditional imaging methods. Potential concerns, however, are whether or not this in vivo imaging technique is just as powerful and accurate when compared to current methods and whether the magnetic cell manipulation is as viable long term as modern gene therapy techniques. These should be further investigated to determine the extent of the particles' effectiveness. Nevertheless, Looking to the future, the potential for the use of luciferous coated magnetic nanoparticles in human bodies. Lucifer's coated magnetic nanoparticles. We might even be able to glow in the dark. Glow in the dark. Sounds like fun. That's what I want to do. I want to glow. Don't you guys want to glow? It's going to be awesome, huh? Wow. Hmm. Scientists have discovered some people have a secret bathroom habit that keeps them uh, effortlessly fit. Even without cute. diet or exercise, this bathroom habit... That's what I think about this. Welcome to a video tutorial on luciferase reporter acids. This video lecture is a part of a series of BioCop Studio tutorials that help you better understand circadian biology. We are your narrators, Victoria Nudel and Omar Romero. 
and we produced this video under the guidance of Dr. Susan Cohen and Dr. Susan Golden at UC San Diego. In this video, you are going to learn about the luciferase reporter assay, a common technique utilized to study various biological responses, such as circadian rhythms in many organisms. In this video, you will learn the characteristics of a luciferase reporter, how luciferase is used in circadian biology, and the difference between luciferase reporters and fluorescent protein reporters, such as green fluorescent protein, also referred to as GFP. We will first explain the basics of molecular genetics. The genetic information of an organism is stored in the genome, which is made up of DNA molecules. Within genomic DNA sequences, there are special regions called genes. Genes can code for proteins, which perform various physiological functions and give structure to cells and tissue. The first step of conversion from DNA to protein is transcription. Transcription. The process of making a messenger RNA, mRNA, from DNA. The next step is translation. Trans is converted agenda. To of amino acids resulting in a protein product. Here, we will introduce characteristics of the luciferase reporter. Luciferases are proteins that catalyze a reaction to produce light using a substrate called luciferin. You may have seen bioluminescence in nature. For example, in the light emitted from fireflies, as well as bioluminescent waves created by microorganisms found in the ocean. The amount of light emitted can easily be detected and quantified. The production of mRNA from a gene is controlled by a promoter sequence located upstream of the gene. To measure the activity of the promoter that drives transcription of a gene of interest, in this case, PER2, we can express the cifrase under the control of the PER2 promoter so that the product will be a light-emitting enzyme. Luciferase is expressed at the same time that the gene of interest would normally be expressed from that promoter. This is called a transcriptional fusion because the luciferase gene is transcribed at the same time as the gene of interest. Huh. Once you've acquired a construct containing the luciferase reporter, the, construct. the next step is to introduce this construct into your cells of interest. After being incorporated into the genome, the luciferase gene is transcribed to produce its corresponding messenger RNA. This mRNA is translated into an active luciferase protein, which when provided with this substrate luciferin, can then catalyze a reaction with oxygen to produce light. Mm. The resulting light intensity is measured by detection instruments, which are highly sensitive to bioluminescent light. This light production is correlated with the amount of luciferase produced, which is dependent on the activity of the promoter. So, the more activity of the promoter of the gene of interest, the more light will be produced in the cell by luciferase. In contrast, we can also make a translational fusion, where the coding sequence from the luciferase gene is fused to one end of the gene of interest, such that when the fused transcript is translated, luciferase and the protein of interest are made as parts of the same protein. A translational fusion construct can provide additional information because the level of luciferase is equal to the level of the protein of interest. Similarly, the construct containing the luciferase fusion gene needs to be incorporated into cells of interest. Where the luciferase fusion gene is transcribed and translated into a fusion protein with the active luciferase component, which can then catalyze the reaction with oxygen and the substrate luciferin to produce light. The resulting light intensity is measured by detection instruments to show how much of a protein is being translated at one time. Reporter gene assays can be used to study signaling pathways, gene regulation, and the sequences that regulate a gene. Using genetic reporters allows us to have a visual cue of when proteins are being expressed, what tissues express the gene, as well as how strongly the gene is being expressed. Genetic reporters greatly simplify the process of quantifying when and in what tissues a gene of interest is being expressed, which is why this technique is so relevant to many different applications. Once the luciferase assay is complete and expression data is obtained, this data can be used to calculate the period of the rhythm or the timing from peak to peak. The phase of the oscillation, meaning the time during the day when the gene of interest shows peak expression, and the amplitude of the rhythm or levels of gene expression for the organism or tissue. We would like to point out the key differences between luciferases and fluorescent proteins, as luciferase fusions are usually not good at resolving where within a cell a protein is targeted. 
For this, a different kind of reporter or a fluorescent reporter is used. These separators do not require an external light source, but require a substrate whose difference to emit light. They generate light called bioluminescence through the enzymatic luciferin luciferase reaction. On the other hand, fluorescent proteins do not require a substrate, but require an external light source to emit light. They absorb light of a certain wavelength and emit light with a longer wavelength. This emitted light is called fluorescence. Luciferase reporters are advantageous for quantifying or monitoring promoter activity and protein levels. They can quantitatively detect a very small amount of expression. 510 nanometers bioluminescence produced by luciferase or six. is the only signal mm. within the cell. However, luciferases are not as good at visualizing the location of proteins within the cell because the light produced is too dim for visualizing specific areas. Like luciferases, fluorescent proteins can be fused to a promoter or protein of interest by molecular techniques. Fluorescent proteins are brighter than luciferases and advantageous to visualize where the proteins are localized within the cell. Here you can see an example of how GFP is utilized to show when a gene is expressed by using a transcriptional fusion to monitor expression from the Chi A promoter in cyanobacteria. GFP is expressed when the Chi A promoter is activated, but the GFP protein has no instructions on where to go within the cell. By using a translational fusion, where GFP is fused to Chi A, we can see where within the cell the Chi A protein localizes. Although GFP is good for visualization, it is not as efficient for quantification, especially when the amount of gene expression is low, as many components of the cell also naturally fluoresce and add noise to the signal. To summarize, Luciferous reporters are better for quantification of the level of promoter activity or the amount of protein being expressed, and GFP reporters are more useful for the localization of protein. We hope you now have a better understanding and appreciation for the use of reporters to study complex biological problems, and specifically the uses, functions, and considerations of using luciferase as a reporter versus fluorescent reporters to monitor circadian rhythm. H H the A A Hmm Nothing strange about that guys. Make sure you go get your jabaroo.